going to change it. I want to hear a conversation about I'm 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 this is my bet right now, Jim. I'm putting the money out there. Carolina's going to win tomorrow. Oh can I, I can I bet you. with you? I Let's think they're tired of money. hearing all this conversation. <laughs> they tired of hearing all this talk about that. You know, they, they they couldn't play with all the pets on their back. Now everybody's back and telling them they suck. They're not this. They're not that. Telling you know Hubert, we should have hired West Miller. And all the conversation out there now. Carolina's going to respond tomorrow. I'm betting the house. I'm I'm totally totally agree. Like fully agree. I'm betting the house. I will be betting on it just to to, to put put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> just confirm that. Uh, but look, Baycott's looked healthy, and I think that's been huge. That's a huge part of it. That part of that little rut they got in was Baycott wasn't healthy, didn't play at Virginia Tech, and I basically said like I'm not going to give up on them until they lose at home healthy, and they haven't done that yet. I know they've had some tough losses, but uh, I think they kind of reassert themselves tomorrow against Ohio State, play in, play them pretty big inside with Baycott and the guards I think are starting to figure out moving the ball a little bit. They scored a hundred against the Citadel. I think the ball movement's coming back a little bit. I, I haven't have seen RC get so excited by the I'm way. I'm telling you. Make that prediction. I'm, telling you. I mean... I'm telling you it's coming. All the, all the negativity about it. And then, and then to your point though, I had their the fourth loss in a row was at Virginia Tech. And even then the slot, the shot selection of the guard play was better. You know, they didn't have a Mondo. Mondo didn't play that game. So yeah. they they pressed and I think they lost by eight. They were down by 18 to 20 and it got it cut it to eight. But the guard play was better that game. And then it translated over to the Citadel game. I think they're starting to figure some things out. I think like we talked about, Hubert getting those guys back, getting them in the gym, them practicing. And then like we said, they just tired of hearing all the negativity of that and they hear it. It's Carolina. Everybody's giving it to them. And I think this game just means more to them. I, I think it has to early on. Ohio State's got some wins. They they played well. They've been in conference, but they've done. Carolina's been told like, "What's what's your best win right now? What what, what is your best win?" That, you know, they, that's all they're hearing, and they're gonna have Ohio State, Michigan back to back. I think they're I think they're poised to make a statement. Yeah. Well, and to that point, right, like you're playing against time of year too, right? You're playing this game. You're about to go into Christmas. If you can win this game, if you're Carolina. Yep. You're feeling really good coming yep. back, get into ACC play. And if you can just continue to build upon that, like no one's going to talk about how you started out. No. And they need it. February. They need it. They need it now. We talked about it before because they don't play in Michigan. They don't play Virginia Tech again. So that's out of the way. So now from a resume standpoint, they can ill afford to lose to Ohio State in Michigan. And then, I mean, it's back to being a mess. I just think – it's almost like, hey, there's not a lot of must-win games this early in the year, but for a team that started out number one in the country and, and fell off the map as quickly as they did, this is one of the first must-win games. Like, all right, we, we got to take the temperature here and see where we are. And I think they're going to come out. If they're healthy, they're starting to figure it out, I, I think they get Ohio State. Yeah, the, the number that I love, uh, Megan, you mentioned it early with Xavier and how well they moved the ball tonight. Um, so last year, UNC was 87th in the country in assist rate, which is like the percent of your baskets that are assisted. That's really good. 87th. Awesome. This year, they're 303rd, but they had 24 assists on 32 baskets against the Citadel. Like that's the kind of pop and ball movement that they had last year. I think they've sort of found it a little bit kind of circled the wagons after they got buried by everybody. And now they're going to come out and like, like RC said, make a statement tomorrow. How, what does Ohio state need to do to win on the road? Uh, New York city, right? This yeah. So in, New York. Sam, New Matt, York. Yeah, so New York. So New York. Yeah. That's, that's I, a good one. <laughs> what are you, I'm, I'm deferring to RC on this one. <laughs> no, I, it's not, it's not going to be an easy game for Carolina by no stretch of the imagination. Ohio state's tough. And they've I, I won mean, tight games. Yeah, they, they, they're they tough. Can. They're battle-tested. I mean, that that come from behind when I know it was a lucky – you know, I wouldn't even call it a lucky shot or a shot that wasn't supposed to happen against Rutgers, but well, – they're, stepping they're out just, of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stepping back in. They don't call that, so – in the record, but in, in the books, it's a win. So, I, I again, they can't get sped up. They can't turn the ball over. You know, I think that's the biggest thing. They can't turn it over, which they which they have with the inexperienced backward. I mean, young backward. So yeah. we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I'm curious to see how that matchup goes because, you know, we interviewed Coach after the game and and, and he raved about his group and it's it's just one of those games about it. I, I just think it just means more to Carolina. It's nothing against Ohio State. 
Ohio State's playing better. I just think North Carolina has to have this game. It's just one of those games that's tired of hearing all the noise, everything that's going on. It's a neutral site game. It's in New York. Fans of Carolina is going to travel there well. I, I just think it means more to them, and I think this will be a game where they kind of show you, all right, this is why we were in the national championship game a year ago and start that as they get in the conference play. Yeah, that's I'm pretty on board with that. I know UNC doesn't like force a ton of turnover statistically, but that stretch RC you mentioned at the end of the Virginia Tech game, where they yes. really turned on turned it on defensively and that kind of like amped up their ball movement on offense. They got better shots after that. I think they can kind of build on that. So Ohio State needs to take care of it and avoid letting UNC get out and run because that's when I think they start to have fun and feel themselves a little bit when they're in the open floor. And yes. let's look out for Jalen Jalen Washington as well coming in. He just got his first basket in, and he's a talented kid, all be a six ten, and he can shoot. So he's going to start getting his first acclimation of all right. This you were getting into the Citadel. Now you're going to come in here and play against the big boys. So he's going to start getting, you know, some of those younger guys in there to to to, to develop their bench. I think it'll be big for those guys. I mean, Demarco Dunn broke his hand; he's out, but Trumbull's been great. I think he's been really, really, you know, played really well for those guys. So let's see who steps up, on, you know, from the Carolina bench because he he's been consistently playing those guys. Tyler, Tyler, I think Tyler Nickel played a little bit the last game and shot it well. And we'll see how much, you know, does his minutes continue to increase. So we'll see. Well, they need to do that because if you're going to try to make a deep run, you got to at least have some guys you can go to on the bench because you never know what's going to happen injury wise or just in general throughout foul trouble, flow of a game, whatever that might be. We uh, say that, but this is the same team that we – he – I mean, he rolled those guys all the way to the national championship last year. Like, there was no bitch. It was it was just Puff Johnson, and then y'all going to play 38 minutes. If you tie, catch a, catch, a, catch a win in the timeout. Like, that's it. Like, you're not coming out. Like that's The like, Iron Five, right? They called you the know Iron what I mean? Five. That's what he did to him. Like, yeah. Puff, oh, Puff, need a break. Oh, okay. And he would just sub them out. I and mean, then it was literally like, you rotate with those six guys, and that was it. Do you, you think that's an outlier, though? Like I don't think they can do that again. No, no, no. I agree. I don't think yeah. they can do that again. I think Trimble has earned enough. Trimble's played well enough to earn it. I mean, he's defending well. He's not a great shooter. Uh, DeMarco Dunn was starting to figure things out. I mean, he's got guys. I think he realized that we ran out of gas, and he's trying to play his bench early. Now, I feel as though the bench will shorten up over these next couple of weeks. Because I don't think they're going to go through conference play and risk losing games. Because they can, the last thing Carolina can do is get in the conference play. Is first of all, is lose these back to back games. You have got to win one of these games. They cannot lose Ohio State, Michigan, and then start go back in the conference play. Mm-hmm. They, that that'll be that'll be the last. If they do that, then you're talking about they'll be hard pressed to get back into like an eighth seed. They'll be similar to last year. I think if they win these games. And then get in the conference play and play well, then they can creep back into maybe being a top five seed in the tournament.